Have you ever bought something that you thought you loved only to regret buying it further down the line? Well, don't worry, we've all been there. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about some of my biggest clothing regrets. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes so you don't end up wasting your hard-earned cash like I did. And let me know if you've made any of these mistakes as well. If you like this video, please feel free to drop it a like. And now that's all out the way, let's get into my biggest clothing regrets. So the first item is my NN07 Bill trousers. Bit of a mouthful. So when I first got these trousers, I was over the moon with them. The fit was exactly what I was looking for at the time, and they went with all my sneakers, all my shoes, and they were so easy to style. So yeah, I was happy with them. That was until I washed them, and after the second or third wash, they started to fade. And before some of you tell me I must have washed them wrong, I always wash my clothing at 30 degrees or below, and I never put my clothes in the dryer. I let them air dry out of direct sunlight, so I didn't do anything different with these. These also cost me a pretty penny. I think they cost me around £145, £150, something like that. So I was expecting them to hold up well, but sadly not. If you've had a good experience with the brand, then please do let me know because sometimes you get unlucky and this might have been the case here. Next up, we've got this Acne Studios grey sweatshirt. This is probably the item that I regret the least on this list because I might wear it again in the future. But I've been saying that for the past six or seven years that I've had this sweatshirt and I've probably only worn it about six or seven times. Now, even though I love my simple clothing, there's something about this sweatshirt that doesn't excite me much and I can't put my finger on it. I love the cut, I love the neckline, but maybe it's the structure or the color of the sweatshirt. It's not a heavyweight material, it's not rough, it's not stiff, but it's kind of rigid, if that makes any sense. I'm a firm believer and I always say it, if you don't wear something, sell it and put the money towards something that you'll actually wear. And that's what I should do with this piece, but for some reason there's a voice in the back of my head saying that if I sell it, I'll regret it. And who knows, I might do, I might not, but maybe it's time. I won't regret selling the next piece though, and it's my sweatshirt from Droll de Monsure. Now I love the idea of this sweatshirt, I love the design, I love the fit, but it's the color that doesn't work for me. And to be honest, I wasn't that mad about the color when I bought it, but I've got so many black clothes that I told myself I needed some color in my wardrobe. Now me and Red, we suit each other well, but I just don't wear a lot of it, but it's the upper of the jumper that doesn't work for me. The beige just doesn't complement my skin tone and it makes me look a little bit washed out. And because of this, I never wear this sweatshirt. And for me, this was a lesson to not just buy color for the sake of buying color, just so you've got something different in your wardrobe. There's a reason I've got so much black in my wardrobe and I wear so much black because I feel myself in it and it just works for me. And because I wear a lot of black, I think a lot of people think I don't like wearing color or I don't like color, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I love color and I love to wear color, but these days I'm a lot more fussy about the colorful items that I buy. It's just got to be something really unique and really versatile. And I do want to add some more color to my wardrobe, but it has to be right and I'm in no rush. But even when I don't rush and I take my time with my clothing, things can still go wrong. Just like this next regret, my Etudes bomber jacket. Now this one's the most frustrating one for me because I had this on my wish list for over a year. And with my wish list, I normally add things to it and then sit on them for about a month or two before I buy them. And then after a couple of months, when I'm going back over my wish list or adding something else to it, I check back over it and then take off items that I no longer like. And if something's been on there for one one or two months, then I buy it. But the reason I held off buying this one for so long was because of the price. It's a lot of money for a nylon bomber jacket and more than I wanted to spend. Especially since there's a lot of similar bomber jackets to this one for a fraction of the cost, but there was something about this one that I just loved. Anyway, I came across this jacket in the Essence sale about a year ago, and it was the only one left in my size, and it had sold out everywhere else, so I had to go for it. And at first, I was over the moon. I finally had this jacket that I'd been wanting for over a year and I got it at a discounted price. The quality was fantastic, it fit me really well and I thought I was going to have this piece in my wardrobe for a very long time. But after the initial excitement wore off, I realized that I didn't really like the way I looked in this jacket at all. Although it fit me well, it was a little bit too bulky on me and a bit too flashy for my liking and shiny as well, so I never wanted to wear it. Now don't get me wrong, I still love the jacket and I love the way it looks on others, but it just doesn't work for me. 
but another item that doesn't work for me right now is my Ronin cargos. Now just a heads up with these, there's nothing wrong with these cargos. They're great quality, they look great, but they're just not my style. So why do I have them, you might be asking? Well, that's a great question. Have you ever had it where you suddenly hate your existing wardrobe and you want it to completely change overnight? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. I thought I was bored of my wardrobe and I decided to impulse buy a load of different items, including these cargos. Anyway, long story short, I never really ended up wearing these and I went straight back to my other trousers that I thought I hated and thought I was sick of, but I loved them again. All I needed was a break away from my current wardrobe to experiment with some different styles to really appreciate what I already had. The only annoying thing is it cost me money that I didn't need to spend to find that out. Next up, we've got my Saint Laurent sunglasses. Now, I don't know about you, but I find sunglasses that suit me well really hard to find. I've tried so many pairs out and they all look awful on me. So you're probably thinking, if he's tried out so many pairs of sunglasses that don't suit him and he bought this pair, then they must suit him, right? Wrong. When you try so many pairs of sunglasses out that look awful on you, when you get one pair that don't look quite as awful, you think they look a lot better on you than they actually do. And that was the case with these, so I picked them up. But I don't know what I was seeing when I was looking at myself in these the first few times when I thought I looked good in them, but I don't see that now. Now I see a man in a pair of sunglasses that do him no favors at all. Since this incident, I found out that rounder frames seem to suit me better, but I still haven't found the perfect pair of sunglasses yet. Next up, we've got the Air Legacy Chino 22. So there's a few reasons why this trouser is on this list. The first is that I bought them when I was bulking over the winter and none of my trousers were fitting me, so I needed a bigger pair of trousers, so I got these. But now I've cut back down, these trousers are too big for me in the waist. So nothing a tailor can't sort out, right? Well, maybe, but the thing with these is I was never quite sure on the fit of these in the first place. And I don't mean how they fit around my waist, I mean the overall cut and shape of the trousers. I think on me, it looks like they can't decide whether they want to be a tailored fit or a relaxed fit. They just sit awkwardly in the middle. But the reason I kept these is because I bought them from the official Air Legacy store in Sweden and they don't offer free returns. So to return them, I had to send them insured, tracked, whatever it was, and then I was worried about import duties as well. I didn't want to be hit by those. So basically, the whole returns process, it just put me off wanting to send them back. So what I thought is I'd use the money that I was going to use to return the item to pay a tailor to fix the item. The problem is I moved cities about a year ago and I haven't found a tailor that I trust in this city yet. So I haven't got them tailored yet. Anyway, the moral of this story is if you're not 100% sure on something when you first get it, send it back. Nine times out of 10, for me anyway, your gut instinct is normally right and you're probably not gonna wear that item. Next, we've got a hoodie from Aimee Leon Dor. So I'd been eyeing up this hoodie from ALD for absolutely ages back in 2017, I think it was. And at the time, I thought I was a size large or extra large. So that was the size that I used to buy. I didn't really understand proportions back then and I was still in that mindset that I'll grow into it. So always get something bigger because you're probably gonna grow into it. Anyway, I spent a lot of money on this hoodie and just look at me in it. It's far too long. Now, I haven't bought anything from ALD in years, but back then they used to run really slim and really long. So a large in ALD was really long. And out of interest, what's ALD quality like these days? I've heard mixed things. Now the hype's died down around them. I'm thinking possibly about picking up some stuff from them again, but I'm not sure. Please drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe and thanks so much for watching. See you later.